So we, we announced our biggest intersection to date. So, uh, in our, uh, what we call the lion zone, uh, part of our NIST, uh, discovery. So we hit, uh, 39.6 uh, meters of, uh, four, almost 0.2%, uh, copper equivalent. So, uh, pretty, um, massive numbers across the board, a super lucrative, uh, you know, mineralized zone, um, with 150 meters down. Um, and that's, uh, it's not our best intersection in terms of, uh, grade, uh, but it's a great grade and thickness intersection. Terry Lynch, Power Nickel, what's going on? How are you? Great, Andy. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. We met in uh, Florida about a week ago, and um, we decided to put this on the books because, and I had no idea what it was, but some possible big news was coming out this week, and it looks like it's just hitting the wire. Let's start with that. Tell me about your big news that's hitting the wire right now. Yeah, so we we announced our biggest intersection to date. So uh, in our uh, what we call the Lion Zone uh, part of our NIST uh, discovery, so we hit uh, thirty nine point six meters of uh, four, almost point two percent. Uh, copper equivalent. So, uh, pretty, um, massive numbers across the board, a super lucrative, uh, you know, mineralized zone, um, with 150 meters down. Um, and that's, uh, it's not our best intersection in terms of, uh, grade, uh, but it's a great grade and thickness intersection. And we've probably, you know, we've been uh, at this now, we had about 10,000 meters into this mine zone, probably drilled, you know, 30. I reported on 30, I think 31 holes now, and, uh, probably hit on 25 of the 31 and 12, 13 of them have been, uh, you know, this ilk or, or better. So between, you know, uh, you know, seven to 40 meters of, you know, five, you know, four to 20% of copper equipment, it's been a absolute smasher of a high grade, uh, ore zone, you know, and it's starts at sort of like 30 meters or so, and it were as deep as, uh, maybe 300 meters, I guess. But the most recent part of the discovery is like pull 70, well, uh, we reported on two weeks ago, which is 32 meters of 7% copper equivalent was, uh, at 110 meters of depth and, and today's hole was around 150. So you can see that it's quite shallow and we're hitting this stuff as we're stepping out West. So it's, uh, it's a, uh, a super, uh, exciting because. It is obviously, uh, you, you, high grade means, uh, uh, a lot more economics, you know, in, 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 in the refinery bulk manufacturing process. And obviously you can build tons quicker, you know, in terms of the, uh, tons and tons of metal contained, which is what's really critical. So, uh, we're super stoked about what we're seeing and we think we're just scratched the surface on, you know, on an amazing discovery. Well, congratulations. And I want to give some context to the viewers and listeners that's going to be uh, watching this, Terry and Power Nickel have not paid me for this interview. They are not uh, sponsors of the show. I am not an investor of Power Nickel. The first time I met Terry was about a week ago at a conference in Lauderdale, and I was coming at it as an investor to get critical metals, specifically copper and nickel uh, exposure, because I am bullish on the macro with them. I did watch the corporate presentation, but again, I just want to be clear uh, to everyone, I am not as of yet an investor that certainly can and more than likely will change as the weeks progress. Terry, so I have a lot of questions here. Let's take a step back. I'm very interested in both copper and nickel plays, and I know the answer to some of these questions. We discussed them in Florida. Your name is Power Nickel, but you're getting copper and other metals. Tell me a little bit about all of that and what are people, investors, getting exposure to when they buy your company? Sure. So when we started, uh, we started off as a, as a nickel uh, sulfide project. We actually acquired this uh, uh, NISC project with 46 square kilometers. And if you, if you think of, of the box on the page and, and on, the, on the lower left-hand corner and uh, the southwest corner, so to speak, uh, we, we started off with this nickel project and it had, you know, 3.1 million tons of about one and a half percent nickel and copper, you know, so nickel equivalent, uh, nice grade, very attractive. And we built that up to 7.2 million tons or so of about, uh, 
according to 101 of about 1.13%. And then uh, it ultimately probably is around eight, eight and a half right now. And then in looking for more nickel sulfide, we, we stepped out uh, five and a half kilometers away. We saw, you know, the uh, existing uh, sort of discovery in this main call was uh, associated with ultramafic rock. And so we saw this ultramafic expression surface a little bit to the uh, northeast, five and a half kilometers away, had an EM anomaly, drilled it, looking for the nickel sulfide and voila, we got lucky and we hit this massive copper sulfide. Um, and we had the discovery hole was basically uh, 60 meters. We had uh, eight meters of one ounce uh, platinum group elements, really 20, 20, 21 grams of platinum and and uh, and, and stuff like that. And and then one and a half percent copper. So that was exciting enough. And then we, then we uh, you know, stepped back into it Drilled 16 holes from January through the end of April last, this winter, uh, last winter, I guess, last January. And we hit on, uh, 15 or 16 holes and over half of those were, you know, I would call them big intersections, like over 10 meters of 10% copper equivalent. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's just a, a really unusual, I mean, there's just nothing quite like it. So, uh, in the, in the history of books, really. So, so that's, uh, honestly been, you know, you know, it made us scratch our heads as to what we really had. So we realized that what we had was, uh, 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 uh what was called an orthomagnetic, uh, system, which is comprised of nickel, copper, and noble metals. And what are noble metals? That's basically platinum group elements plus gold and silver. And so we have this, uh, triangle in our mind where we have nickel on the left-hand side, copper on the right, and the noble metals at the top. And in our, you know, vision of things, we'll probably end up being about 33% revenue wise, nickel, copper, and noble metals. So, uh, that's really good for a lot of reasons. It means we're, you know, the, the, the biggest, the most, high, the most valuable mines in the world are not diamond mines. They're not gold mines. They're not uranium mines. They're probably metallic mines. So Norilsk is one example of that. That's literally the biggest mine in the world, uh, trillion four in the ground, um, uh, and, you know, a stunning fact that I learned last week, Andy, that I didn't know, or about two weeks ago, I guess, when we were at our aspiration meetings in Ottawa, was that Norilsk, uh, trillion four valuation, 90% of it comes from one square kilometer. So imagine that square kilometer, how mind blowing is that? So we've got a super rich, uh, discovery here, uh, which is, uh, exciting the market and, 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 and really just getting going, uh, but. We, I think our name has probably, uh, somewhat confused people, our nickel, I think we're a nickel deal. And, and, and so now we're, we're probably shifting. We're probably changed our name in, in a few weeks to power metallic, to get people to focus more on the polymetallic nature of what we've discovered. And we've, uh, we've been lucky in that we recently, well, we obviously, uh, we, we've cashed up, we raised $20 million in June of last year, we had, uh, Legendary investor, Robert Friedman took half the round, Rob McEwen took 20% or he had a couple of mining funds, took the rest. So I would call it smart money was done at a dollar 25 a share, which is the bubble where we're at today, but it was able to do that way because Quebec has some unique financing incentives for exploration and critical minerals. So even though we were able to get a dollar 25 in a treasury through Quebec based investors, they actually sold their stock the very next, uh, hour to our end investors, the free and the McEwen's of the world for 66 cents, but the treasury got about 25. So it was, was, was really fantastic. And then we've been able to use that to obviously explore. And one of the other things we're, we've been able to do that we're super keen on is we brought on some thought leadership. So while we've done a great job of finding the project and expanding it, we'd never had a polymetallic discovery before. It's a special set of science. So we literally brought in, I would say the top polymetallic guy in the world is named Dr. Steve Beresford. He used to be chief geo at, at first quantum and then an MMG and IGO three very large companies that have done very well in polymetallic discoveries. And, uh, he's moved on to strictly be looking and investing in polymetallic discoveries. And, uh, he had a, a, a great video out of looking for the next Norris and my son watched it. He's a financial analyst. He said, dad, we got to talk to this guy. He, he really knows the, the space and let's see if we can't get him on the team. So we reached out and, and, you know, after a process, he, after we reeled off all those hits from January to April, he came out as an advisor, he came over, had a look at one of the site and then fell in love with it. And he joined the, the board. So he's now our chief technical advisor on the, on the geological side of things and he's on the board and 
And we really feel pumped about, you know, the thought leadership he can provide us and help us expand this uh, special uh, discovery. Okay. So you re- I remember you telling me that in Florida, and I was very impressed with that, but there's a couple of things that I want to highlight and even ask you to all of our viewers and uh, listeners. I just had, well, I'm not going to name drop, but you can see him in the video of major player in this space. And we were talking about hated assets and we love hate. I feel like the bitch. That's where you just pick up stuff cheap. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. It, that's everything that you're mining. Well, I don't want to say everything, but that's predominantly what you're mining. In the assets that we're talking about were nickel, copper, and platinum. Yeah. You get the trifecta, you hit the hat trick, Terry. So yes. um, that gets me very interested. But before I would invest in anything, well, let me take another step back. I really love your jurisdiction. A lot of people are going to be confused about what just happening happened in your financing, but it's actually one of the one of the things that make Quebec so attractive. If you can give me just work that out a little bit more in about sure. a minute, why that happened? Yeah, it really so, enables you to get some really big players on the team at really good prices. Yeah, and so we've we've used this. Uh, approach of the financing uh, multiple times, maybe three or four times. So we've gotten uh, as uh, as much as three times our share price. And on this bigger one, we ended at 1.9. There's been some recent changes to the tax code that brought that multiple down, but now we're firmed out at 1.9. So so what happens is the governments in Quebec and Canada are trying to obviously inspire people to, to find more critical minerals. So, so they create some tax incentives for uh, Canadian uh, investors. And in Quebec, uh, the government uh, of Quebec, you know, uh, doubled it up effectively. So what happens is uh, there is a industry, a financial industry inside Quebec where they've raised almost like, uh, I want to say a couple billion dollars a year. And they, so they're, you know, fairly sophisticated, you know, big cap financial institutions that you come and they aggregate, you know, uh, French, there are Quebec investors of paying 54% of their uh, income uh, as tax. And they get them in a situation like this. And then that, in our case, let's take the most recent example where we sold the stock for $1.25 and they, and they come in, they bought the stock for $1.25 and they sold it for 66 cents. And then they're gone. So they have no more, uh, exposure. They saw their tax rate go from 54% to 42. So that's why that guy did not deal. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and so they're gone. The 66 cent investor is just a pure financial investor. He likes the deal at 66 cents, he invests. What, what's not the like is that he puts 66 cents in, he's got an up 25 de-risking his investment. So that's an attractive incentive. I mean, still has the merits have to make sense for him to invest, but that's a nice kicker, right? So, and then from the company's perspective, obviously for my existing shareholders, I'm diluting it about 25 exactly. instead of 66 cents. So that's why we like it, you know? So it's a win, 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 and it's unusual. And it's the only place like it in the world. Uh, it, you can get it to a lesser extent in other Canadian provinces, but Quebec's the best. Yeah. Okay. So that really goes into my, um, my other point is that because it's in Quebec and you did what you did, you really protected your current shareholders. So, uh, I just want to point that out to all of our viewers and listeners. Um, and again, I don't know anywhere else, any other jurisdiction in the world really that does that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think so. So let's, let's do this moving forward. What is the plan moving forward, um, getting this into production? Um, and again, these are all assumptions. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Know. So, so, so the catalysts that are before us right now is like, we're obviously we raised all that cash. And, and so we had the start of the quarter, I think 14 or 15 million in the bank, this current drill program that's, you know, we started about two weeks ago is 30,000 meters of drilling. So, uh, I guess the cool part is to say to people with the first 10,000 meters of drilling without the world-class experts, we found this, okay. And we got this far, great, this much value. Um, you know, what are we going to do with the next 30,000 meters when we sort of have a much better sense of where we're going? So, you know, are we going to do as good, better, you know, people will put a number on, uh, people ask us, they say, well, what have you found so far? Well, well, we obviously had posted 7.1 or 7.2 of the nickel has grown to eight, eight and a half. And let's say we've, we've got probably four and a half to five 
may have been found already. The copper sulfide say around 7% average. And they, you know, Hanem has a report out saying we'll, we'll get at least nine and maybe as much as 90. Um, uh, you know, so, uh, the, 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 this thing is just getting going. Um, you know, so uh, I think on that side of things, the ca expiration catalyst will be basically in the form of assay results. So we put out this big result today. The next result from the summer will be in two or three weeks. We'll get that out. And then, uh, uh, since we've been drilling, you know, uh, by that point a little bit, you know, for five weeks, probably the next result will be three, three weeks after that, where, where we start to get the fall results coming out. So it's going to be very easy because of the, you know, these are not, uh, three month drill holes. They're like three days, you know, cause it's, it's pretty shallow. So that's good. And we get them in, in their turnaround time is sort of six to eight weeks or so on the assays. So it'll be fairly newsy from now until the end of June, every three or four weeks, we'll get assay results and people can just sort of see how the expiration is going. And right now, if you, if you look and sort of say, uh, you know, again, visualize on your page that it's open to the West and it's open uh, at debt. So we're continuing to grow and initially we're, our, our step outs were fairly conservative, 50 to 75 meters or so. Just because, you know, we're, uh, you know, sensitive, uh, you know, we have only a limited amount of capital. Now that we've cashed up, we're being a bit more aggressive. Plus Steve's brought some technology, Steve, Dr. Steve Beresford technology to the table that makes us, uh, you know, we're doing down holding it. It should be the key signature tech on how we're going to expand. And, and basically what downhole, uh, EM gives you is it turns a six inch sort of diameter hole into a 200 meter diameter hole. So, so you get down there. You find your or, or body, you do this pulse, the electromagnetic pulse. And if it suggests that, that there still is magnetic material in that radius, well, you know, you're probably pretty good to step out 150 of that 200 meters and know that highly likely it's going to be there. So, so that's going to be sort of the key technology of choice going forward. We'll do this. This is what Steve's used quite successfully in, in other discoveries. So we'll keep on advancing West because, you know, we, we move out, uh, just so keep people conceptualize what this could mean in terms of growth and valuation. We step out 150 meters. It's like adding another half million tons at this type of thickness, which is probably worth, I don't know, $300 million on the ground. Okay. Put a number on it. It's a hell of a return on 50 grand. It's been, you know, so, 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 so obviously the more you can do with that, that's how you build these, you know, uh, crazy, yeah, not crazy, but how you go from zero to zero on, on the, on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, market cap side. So if this thing is right now market cap of 150 million. And honestly, if I decided to go golfing tomorrow and put us for sale up, we would sell it for, in my mind, three, four times that easy. Yeah. But why would we, you know, we we're, we're in our wheelhouse now. We think we can, uh, this is, uh, this is going to be a much, much bigger project than people think. And, um, we think there's uh, a very long way in front of us. Excellent. Okay, Terry, I think we're going to end on that, but like, give me your uh, website as well as your, uh, your tickers. So um, if investors are interested in purchasing, sure. how do they do that? Yeah. Okay. So you can get a, a nice PowerPoint at the, uh, uh, powernickel.com. Lots of interviews and stuff where we walk through the, the story in more detail. Uh, there's lots of aspects to it. There's some very, um, you know, interesting other sidebars that are quite exciting as well. And the ticker symbols are in Canada, uh, Power Nickel, Power Nickel, PNPN, and in the U.S., PNPN, F. So uh, uh, we'd love to uh, see you join, and uh, we think we'll we'll give you a, a very interesting uh, uh, exploration excitement here. This is uh, early days, and I, I say to people, you missed the 40 cent move, you haven't missed the four dollar move, or the forty dollar yeah. move. Maybe it's 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 really getting real right now. All right, excellent. Thank you, Terry, and you appreciate your time. Great, man. Thanks you for having us. Cheers, Andy.